Hi there everybody, Tom from OSV here. Are you hunting for your perfect premium saloon? This is the seventh generation BMW 3 Series and in today's in-depth review, we'll discover if this popular model is still a viable option three years on. off the production line for over 40 years now, the BMW 3 Series is the German manufacturer's longest running model. It's also the brand's best seller, accounting for 30% of its total annual sales and shifting over 108,000 units in 2021 alone. When this seventh generation 3 Series arrived in the UK back in 2019, it promised to raise the bar in the premium midsize segment with class leading driving dynamics, sportier styling, innovative tech and exceptional efficiency. So now that we've had a great deal of time with this car, does it live up to expectations? Today we'll explore how the 7th Gen 3 Series stacks up three years on from launch. Is it still a desirable executive car offering or would you be better off going with the Audi A4 or even the new Mercedes C-Class? Let's find out but before we do make sure to head over to the OSV website to browse the latest lease deals on BMW as well as other premium brands and click the subscribe button for more comprehensive vehicle reviews. This seventh generation version of the 3 Series was the first to be built on the CLAR platform that made its introduction back in 2015 with the 7 Series. This new architecture reduced the car's overall weight by 55 kilograms over its predecessor and it also increased body rigidity by 50% uh, serving to improve ride quality and you'll find out more about that in the driving experience section of this review. But let's start by revisiting the exterior design, especially the front end here. Is it still imposing? Does it still stand out on UK roads? Let's find out. So when it came to the design of the 7th Gen 3 Series, BMW aimed to think outside the box and create a look that's more modern and dynamic. Did they achieve that? Well, at the time I think they did, but now the exterior design is lagging behind the competition and it feels a little bit outdated. It seems that the trend with a lot of new models is to have one exterior design feature that makes the car distinctive and stand out against the rest. So for example, we have the fang-like LED headlights you'll see on a lot of new Peugeot models, and then the front ends of the new Kia Sportage and the Hyundai Tucson. They're certainly interesting, uh, they're distinctive and they do stand out. Uh, as such then the 3 Series kind of lacks any of those elements but one advantage, well for some at least, is that it doesn't have the new Marmite kidney grille that you'll see on a lot of new BMW models. Having said that, I do have to admire how sleek and professional the 3 Series looks even in 2022 and that's thanks to the sharp contours you'll spot sloping their way down the front bonnet there as well as on the side profile. It's a clean, refined and uncomplicated look that is welcome in 2022 where every new model seems to try its hardest to make that perfect first impression for better or worse. The model we have here for review is the 330i M Sport Pro Edition, so that's the top rung petrol without making the jump to those performance M models. Uh, with the M Sport Pro Edition, you get the extended high gloss shadow line exterior trim, so you can spot that now on the front grille, that lovely high gloss finish. Uh, it's definitely my highlight here for the exterior design. You can also spot the high gloss finish on the air intakes along the bottom of the vehicle. Adaptive LED headlights come as standard across the 3 Series range, so when you enable this uh, via the auto button inside the cabin, uh, the lights will adjust on the fly uh, depending on vehicle speed, incoming traffic and road condition. So that's a nice bit of convenience afforded to the driver. I also like the design of the lights as well and how they curve towards the uh, grille there, very nice. As standard you get 17 inch alloy wheels, though you can upgrade to larger 18 or 19 inch alloys depending on your preferred trim level. As we've opted for the M Sport Pro Edition model, we have 19 inch double spoke jet black alloys with blue brake calipers and they look amazing. <laughs> Exterior design then, we've just opted for Alpine White, that's the standard 
colour and it nicely contrasts the high gloss shadow line trim that you get with the M Sport Pro Edition. Really, really nice there. If you're not a fan of white though, you can opt for a number of different metallic colours. Uh, these include black sapphire, mineral white or grey, sunset orange or pot de mal blue. Is that how you pronounce that, Andre? Yeah. Okay, cool. Thanks very much. Uh, you can add these to your configuration from around £675. Other highlights of this very clean side profile include the M Sport badging, which you'll spot here as well as on the other side. And down here on the side skirt is an M Performance signature. Nice to see. Folding door mirrors come as standard and they come integrated with the blind spot monitoring feature, which alerts you when a car passes closely by on either the left or right hand side. So that is handy there. And then you have the uh, indicator light on the side there as well. The door handles are being whatever body colour you've chosen. So we make our way to the back. Rear privacy glass there for the high spec trim levels. Hofmeister kink. Lovely jubbly. At the back we have LED rear lights in a lovely slender design. The top of the tailgate here is absolutely massive and that's aimed to give the uh, rear end here a dynamic design. And then you have a large panel of rear privacy glass for the rear windscreen. But if we do take a step back and just have an overall look at the rear end, it's pretty boring isn't it? It's pretty uninteresting especially by today's standards. I would like to see this improved upon and developed with an 8th generation model. When it comes to dimensions then the BMW 3 Series measures 4,709 millimeters in length so it is slightly shorter than its two key rivals the Audi A4 and the new Mercedes C-Class though it is wider than those cars at 2,068 millimeters. Height is identical though but when it comes to boot space, how does the 3 Series compare with the competition? There's only one way to find out. Let's get that bad boy open. Okay, then the 3 Series offers a boot capacity of 480 litres. So that's on par with the Audi A4. And it's more than you get with the new Mercedes C-Class, uh, which gives you 455 litres. So that's a pretty big advantage there over one of this car's key rivals. Um, in terms of what you can fit in the back, so three to four of these small carry-on suitcases here. Let's just slide them in. Easily three, four if you put one on top of maybe the other two. And there should be enough space to, for two to three large suitcases, three at a push though. There's no underfloor storage, which is a bit disappointing, but you do get two uh, tiny compartments on either side for putting those objects I like to roll around while on the go. There's hooks down here for strapping in objects I like to fly around and at the back. So this boot space should be absolutely fine for the weekly grocery shop. Though if you do need a bit more capacity for those regular family holidays, you know, the skiing trips, the camping trips, then do consider opting for the estate variant of the 3 Series. If you need to extend the boot capacity and there's no rear passengers in the back, then you can fold the seats down in a 40-20-40 arrangement. And it's great that you can do so from the boot directly. So there's latches on either side, on the left and right. Just flick those once. The seats will unlatch. They're not spring-loaded though, so they're not going to fly down. We're going to have to go into the boot here briefly to fold them down. Actually, while I'm in here, I might as well continue to venture onwards and see what delights are in store. Oh. So then guys, with these rear seats folded, that's more than enough room for two adult bikes with the uh, wheels taken off and plenty of space for your golf bags, camping equipment, etc. It's pretty practical actually, I'm, I'm very much impressed. If you'd like to explore your options for the 3 Series at this stage, perhaps you have any questions that need answers, uh, then do get in touch with OSV's vehicle specialist, we'll be more than happy to help. Give us a call on 01903. 538835 or just click the pop-out banner above to book a date or time for a quick chat that works best for you guys. Okay then I think it's about time we get behind the wheel of the BMW 3 Series and see how it drives in 2022. <music> Ok 
Okay guys, when it comes to the 3 Series BMW, there's loads of engine options and tons of trim levels as well. It can get really confusing, so we're going to run through what each of those offer in the engines and trim levels section of this video. The uh, timestamp is up on screen now if you just want to head over there and really deep dive into what the uh, 3 Series has to offer. I'm just going to tell you about the model that we have here for a test drive. So this is the 330i M Sport Pro Edition. So underneath the bonnet, at the front of the car there, we have a four-cylinder turbo petrol engine uh, that produces 258 horsepower and that allows the car to achieve a rather impressive 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 5.9 seconds there so that is faster than the Audi A4 40 TFSI. Uh, so this is rear-wheel drive only unfortunately you can't get the X-Drive all-wheel drive configuration with this particular variant it is an option uh, with other models though and you can only have it as automatic um, if you want manual, you do need to opt for the 318D. So that's the only version there where you can get manual uh, transmission. Though I think you're going to be absolutely fine with automatic. It's very responsive and it glides through the gears incredibly smoothly. When it comes to CO2 emissions then, this particular version of the 3 Series outputs up to 159 grams per kilometer on the combined cycle. Uh, that places it in quite a high benefit in kind or company car tax band for 2022 to 2023. So if this is something that is important to you, you want to take advantage of this tax benefit, perhaps look more towards the hybrid uh, variant of the 3 Series and that drastically reduces the amount of CO2 that is pumped out of the car, therefore placing it in a much more uh, promising uh, benefit in kind tax ban there where you can take advantage of some more appealing uh, tax benefits there. Uh, when it comes to miles per gallon then, uh, with this particular version expect 41 to 44 MPG on the combined cycle, not too bad at all, especially when compared to its rivals. Um, so you'll be making fewer stops at the fuel station, but of course this depends on whether or not you can resist putting this car into sport mode. If you just have it in comfort mode, you should witness very similar figures to what BMW have quoted here. When it came to designing this 7th generation 3 Series, BMW paid a particular focus on enhancing the vehicle's sporty appeal over its predecessor, while improving ride refinement and quality so it can comfortably compete with key rivals like the uh, Mercedes C-Class. And while that is a really difficult balancing act to be had there, uh, the car pulls it off exceptionally well, even three years on from launch. Um, as a result, the combination of sportiness, refinement and comfort is just one of the best on the market. You'll be hard pressed to find a vehicle that just does it just as well as this 3 Series, which is great to say um, considering that rivals have come along since the uh, vehicle's launch in 2019. We've had a fair bit of time with this 3 Series now, so we can definitely say that ride quality has been drastically improved over the 6th generation model and that is thanks to the different suspension setups that are available all of which are fantastic uh, so as standard you get the stroke dependent suspension with damping tech so at lighter loads this actually softens the suspension um, this is especially noticeable when you stick the car in the comfort driving mode uh, when you drive you know along a country road and it's plagued with lots of potholes and lots of humps and bumps as well um, that experience is quite smooth it softens the ride so you're you won't feel the impact of these resonate throughout the cabin so that's quite nice there um, alternatively um, when you have a heavier load uh, perhaps the car is laden with luggage and passengers uh, the suspension is stiffened to improve body control and traction a great system set up there it is worth taking into account this damping tech if you intend on opting for an M Sport model as the suspension is firmer to provide that sporty ride quality. Though you will notice if you do opt for M Sport and driving down like a B road that is plagued with potholes and undulations that reverberate throughout the cabin that the ride quality is surprisingly smooth, perhaps one of the best vehicles in its class for this. So the 3 Series is not only a great car to you know, travel at speed, you know, on A roads and motorways, but if you do need to take it off the beaten track, you'll be surprised by how smooth that ride quality really is. If you feel that the uh, firmer suspension of M Sport model is going to be an issue for you, then do consider opting for the optional adaptive suspension setup. And you can, using this, just soften or stiffen the ride from a press of one of the drive mode buttons. So let's stick it into comfort mode now. So the suspension has just softened for us. Perfect for a B road like this, where we've got some slight undulations. But if we stick it into sport mode then, traction is improved. The car feels a lot more confident, especially going around corners. There's a bit more of an impact resonating throughout the cabin there due to that stiffened suspension, but it's not too bad at all as I just explained earlier. 
and you get a little bit more of them from the performance. I mean, it's already punchy, but it's even punchy in this sport mode. Perfect for overtaking slow moving traffic on a dual carriageway or motorway. So this likely comes as no surprise guys, but this is one of the best handling vehicles that I've had the pleasure to drive. It has excellent body control around corners. That's helped by these nicer side cushions here that hold you in place if any body lean were to happen. But this car just feels so agile when negotiating around tight uh, bends and corners, uh, more so than the Audi A4 and Mercedes C-Class. So that if that is something important to you when it comes to the driving experience, then definitely do consider the free series over those rivals. Uh, let's touch on the steering then. So it is quite hard, uh, but that is what I'd want for definitely an M Sport variant of a, of a BMW model. Uh, but it does lack a little bit of feel with the wheels, which is a little bit disappointing there. Though I will say the, spirit, the steering is responsive. Uh, when you do need to make any corrections, such as going around a corner, it does that pretty much instantaneously. And as such, when you first get into the 3 Series, you'll be surprised by how easy and, well, just optimised it is to drive. Let's address wind, road and tyre noise. How well does the uh, 3 Series suppress these uh, noises then throughout the cabin? Well, exceptionally well, because acoustic glazing comes fitted as standard across the range. Um, as such, you may find the 3 Series to offer a quieter ride than the Audi A4 and the Mercedes C-Class. Indeed, I've heard, hardly heard any bellowing coming from the windscreen and the mirrors. The only sound I really hear is from that engine as you uh, build up to speed, which is kind of what you want when you opt for the M Sport model. Let's talk about visibility then. Uh, you sit quite low down in the 3 Series, but this doesn't have any effect on what you can see around you. The windscreen is nice and large. You can see pretty much all of the bonnet and that allows you to aim the car directly down the road uh, to where you want it to go and shoot off in that direction. Uh, the side pillars here are nice and thin, so that makes it quite easy to, uh, when you get to a junction or a roundabout, you're, there's not much of a blind spot created there. Mirrors are nice and large as well. They come integrated with the blind spot monitoring feature, so that alerts you of any cars passing closely on either the left or right hand side. I'm very impressed with the view outside the rear view mirror. That's nice and uh, cavernous there. I can see pretty much everything about what's, uh, what's behind me there, so that's great. Um, the only complaint I have about the visibility is if I just look around there at my blind spot, the uh, pillar here is rather chunky, but that is really my only gripe. And that's a great achievement considering this is normally a complaint I have with saloons. Uh, as such, the 3 Series has some of the best visibility on offer with a vehicle from this class. When it comes to safety then, the 3 Series has been awarded five stars by Euro NCAP. This is the body that tests the safety of all new cars that launch here in the UK. Uh, that's due to it uh, having lots of standard safety features. Uh, this includes adaptive LED headlights, front and rear parking sensors, the parking camera and active guard. Though if you do want to take advantage of all the safety features that, are, that you can possibly configure with the 3 Series, then do consider getting the driver assistant professional a pack. This has a host of advanced safety tech, um, including adaptive cruise control, uh, lane keeping assist, as well as uh, lane control and steering assist as well. I mean, there's so much, so many features that come with this pack, I'm not going to name them all, uh, but this is just to say that all your safety features or safety concerns are covered by the 3 Series. It shouldn't be an issue for you. So guys, when it comes to the driving experience, I'm still incredibly impressed with what the BMW 3 Series offers, even three years on from launch. It just feels incredibly refined to the point where I don't really know what an eighth generation model is going to add here because it just feels almost perfect in this form. Uh, but I'm gonna pull over now so I can tell you a bit more about the comfort and tech that's on offer inside the cabin. Okay then guys, let's dive into this interior in a bit more detail then. Uh, so the model we have here, that is the 330i M Sport Pro Edition. Uh, so the majority of what I'm going to be highlighting inside the cabin is what you get when you opt for that trim level. Though there are a few things that we've configured as optional extras and I'll tell you what they are as we get to them. Uh, let's begin with the M Sport embellishments then. So when you opt for the M Sport or the M Sport Pro Edition, you get an M Sport steering wheel. Uh, BMW's wheels are my favourite in any vehicle. I know that is uh, very much a personal thing, uh, but I just love the leather that's wrapped around here, very nice and grippy, very, very premium as well. Just feels so well made. Um, you get M Sport floor mats as well. So you can see the colors down there, red, dark blue, and light blue. You also see that on the seat belts, lovely jubbly, and on the seats themselves. So these also have a gorgeous blue stitching. 
down here along the side cushions uh, and they're upholstered in Vanaska leather. And to complement that blue stitching, you can um, set up the ambient lighting to show a lovely shade of blue as well. So there's a number of different colors that you can um, have that show inside the cabin. We just opted for blue because it complements the, uh, the blue stitching there, but you can choose purple and you should choose purple because that's the best color. Let's turn our attention back to these seats then. So they are firm, but they are comfortable. Uh, these size cushions are nice and spongy. They do a great job at holding you in place when going around uh, tight bends and corners. Uh, my one disappointment though is electric adjustment for these seats uh, does not come as standard. It's not even available with this trim level, uh, considering it's one of the highest bet variants. That is a bit disappointing. Uh, you just have to use those levers on the right-hand side there to control the height of the, uh, the seat. I'm currently sitting as high as I possibly can because I love a high seating position in my vehicles. You can come down pretty far though. I'm not going to do that because it'll take me forever. Um, you can recline pretty far though. That's brilliant. So there is a good amount of adjustability to be had in the front here to find that perfect driving position for you. Back to the steering wheel. So on the left hand side you've got cruise controls and on the right you've got controls for the media touchscreen. So there is a 12.3 inch display, a driver uh, digital display behind the steering wheel there. It's nice and large. The graphics are really sharp so it's easy, easy to get that key information that you need while on the go there. Uh, we've opted for the head up display which uh, you won't be able to see in this shot. Um, basically it's just a little screen there that will it, it's basically like it's project, projecting onto the road ahead and it displays um, your speed, the speed limit of the area. If you've mapped a route from A to B, it will show navigation controls as well and cruise control settings. So it's a very handy um, feature there. Um, if I click in this particular wheel, I can toggle between the different radio stations, which is very handy indeed, as well as a few other options as well. So it's great to have that functionality all on the steering wheel. Behind the wheel then we have panel shifters so you can enable the manual mode from within the settings to experience what the car would be like if you opted for a manual transmission and then you change through the gears uh, using those shifters so that's great that that's even an option there and on the right hand side we've got uh, different buttons there to toggle between the different headlight options so we've just got auto selected uh, so the headlights are just on the fly for you that's a, a convenient feature there takes that away from the uh, driver uh, but if you don't want to enable that you can just put dipped headlights on, turn them off, although please don't do that while you're driving, obviously. Yeah, you can have a play around with the different lighting options. They're just on the right-hand side uh, below the rightmost air vent. Complementing the driver display is a 10.25-inch control display in the center console here. It comes installed with the seventh generation uh, BMW iDrive infotainment, and this is still one of, if not the best, infotainment systems you'll find in any vehicle, even three years on from this uh, 3 Series' initial launch back in 2019. Uh, there's a few different ways you can control this display. Display. We'll demonstrate those now. So let's just start with the voice recognition. It's always a bit touch and go, isn't it? But let's switch the car on and give it a go. Hey BMW, I'm hot. The temperature is already set at 16 degrees Celsius. It will be cooler <laughs> shortly. Well, that's. She just insulted my body temperature there, but as you can see, that worked absolutely fine. Um, we did struggle to get it to work a little bit earlier before filming, uh, playing with a, different, a few different options there. Uh, so it's not the most accurate system in the world, but simple commands, you know, like I'm hot, I'm cold, they should work absolutely fine. You can also control it by touching the screen because it is a touch screen after all. If you just love getting it nice and grubby with all your fingerprints, that's certainly an option. Um, do wipe it down though occasionally with a microfiber cloth otherwise it, it is a fingerprint magnet they're gonna show up especially in summer um, I will say as well that the screen attracts quite a bit of glare so when you are driving in the summer and you get a bit of intense sunlight coming through the uh, through the windows there you might struggle to see the different options uh, luckily there is a brightness toggle so you can uh, increase the brightness of the display uh, my preferred way of navigating the screen though is using the rotary dial down here in the center console next to the uh, gear selector. Let's work our way down the center console then. So below the screen we have the buttons for the air conditioning and the climate controls. Love that they're all physical buttons and none of that rubbish is incorporated into the display which I find rather fiddly when our manufacturers do that. Um, by the way the uh, center console really nicely designed so it's all slightly angled towards the driver. It's not too over complicated and it's really easy to see all the options right where you uh, need them to be. 
Um, I will complain about these air vents though. I don't really like the chrome around those. It feels a little bit cheap, a little bit out of um, sorts when compared to the rest of the uh, premium nature of the cabin here. But let's brighten up the review. Let's head on down. I like the uh, piano black buttons uh, for the media. That's very, very nice indeed. And this little flap here is the absolute pinnacle of German engineering. Look at that. Absolutely love that. Nice design on it as well. Uh, we've got a couple of cup holders down here. I've just plopped my keys in one of those. Uh, you get a USB port. Wish this was USB-C. That is the way things are heading, but I'm not going to complain about getting a USB port. And you get a 12 volt socket. We've also added a wireless charging pad. So that's just down here. And uh, yeah, that's also quite a nice feature. Would have been nice to perhaps have, have that as standard with the high spec trim levels. I believe you do have to add that as an optional extra. Um, but yeah, it's great that we've got this with this particular car. And that comes with the Harman Kardon 464 watt uh, surround sound system. And that sounds fantastic as you would expect. There's more of that gorgeous material down here at the bottom of the center console where you'll find the rotary dial that I just spoke about. Plus the gear selector wrapped in a gorgeous uh, piano black material there. And it's a nice chrome on the sides. Uh, there's also buttons on the right hand side of this little uh, cluster where you'll find all the different driving functions. Uh, this is where you also find the buttons for the driving modes. Uh, they don't really stand out when you get into the car. It's a bit like, oh, okay, I can toggle between Sport, Comfort and Eco. Would have liked to have had these maybe in their own little cluster here just so they stand out because they do make a really important um, impact to the driving experience depending on which one you go for. Um, then you have the electronic parking brake. Let's lift that up. There we go, it's enabled for us there. So yeah, nice little cluster here. Let's open up the center compartment then. So really spacious, love the uh, leather on top of that. Doesn't go down particularly far, but it is wide so you can fit lots of stuff in there, lots of sweeties. And there is a USB-C port in there as well for charging perhaps another phone. Perhaps you have more than one phone, lucky you. Let's address build quality, which is high. However, if this is something that is really important to you when looking for a new car, you may want to look more towards the Audi A4 when uh, comparing this car to its rivals, though it is very good, generally speaking. Um, the center console, very rigid, stuck in place. It's not wobbling around at all, which is very reassuring, as you can imagine. Um, up here on the dashboard, love that premium leather material. And you see more of that gorgeous blue stitching, which we also have on the seats as well. Um, love this material here and the piano black surrounds on the display and uh, on the buttons down here. I'm just not a fan of that chrome. I know that's very much to personal taste. Let me know what you think of it. Um, there's a few cheap materials down, you know, by the door bins. The door bins for a little bit plasticky. Um, but apart from that, generally very good, uh, especially for a free UR BMW. Let's explore the cubby holes dotted around the cabin. So I've popped my uh, bottle into the door bin. It fits really comfortably. In fact, there's lots of space to be had. It's probably gonna rattle around in there. There's another compartment in the door here, so you can just shove the bottle in there and it will stay like so. There we go. Let's pop it into the uh, cup holder. Very nice indeed. That just about fits, <laughs> although it's, uh, it's blocking up a lot of my view of that center console. And let's pop open the glove box. How much space have we got to work with? Yeah. You can also have the free series as an estate and that gives you way more practicality. Uh, but if you plan on using the free series saloon as a family car, how much space is in the back there for the kids and all their stuff, luggage, etc.? Well, let's hop in and we'll find out. Right then guys, let's check out the rear space of the BMW 3 Series then. So rear leg room, we're looking at around 900 millimeters. Uh, it's not bad at all. I can stretch my legs out pretty far there. Uh, you will notice that my knees are slightly high up though. It's not causing any kind of discomfort at the moment. Though I do imagine if the driver happens to brake quite sharply, um, you'll kind of be knocking at the back of the seat here and it's got quite a hard plastic on the back there. So that could be pretty uncomfortable and distressing. I'm not too sure why there isn't any kind of door pocket here to uh, put like a tablet or something like that. Bit of a design oversight. Uh, but there are some nice things to admire in the back here. I love the uh, ambient lighting that continues on the doors. Uh, if you've opted for the Harman Kardon sound system, you'll see that on the doors as well. Uh, we've got more of that chrome around the door handle. Let's just ignore that immediately. And then we have some blue stitching running along the side there with some nice premium and plush leather. 
Let's investigate the headroom then. So I'm 5'8". As you can see, I have a lot of space to work with still. If you're six foot or over, you should be absolutely fine, which is a great design achievement considering the uh, roofline starts to slope down towards the uh, tailgate there. You know, passengers over six foot tall should be more than comfortable in the back of the 3 Series. Um, in terms of climate as well, um, they do have a degree of uh, control over how hot or cold the uh, rear cabin space and that is due to this cluster here so we've got a couple of air vents look pretty simple nothing flashy about design or anything but you've got the buttons down there to adjust uh, how hot or cold you want this rear space to be if there's no middle passenger we can fold down this part where you're awarded with cup holders slash central armrest nice lever on that so it's fairly comfortable though resting your palm on the plastic is not ideal we can pop that open, you get a couple of cup holders. So do, does my bottle fit in them? Let's find out. Kind, yes. Yes, it does. Kind of, it doesn't feel secure, but it might fall out on the move. <laughs> we don't know. Another use for the middle seat is we'll just pack all this up. Um, as I explained earlier, they fold in a 40-20-40 arrangement. So you can uh, fold down this middle seat here and then pass objects through into the rear cabin space such as a long piece of wood, skis, camping equipment, whatever you want, pass it straight through and you can also kind of use it as an armrest which is actually a better solution as the, uh, the other one which is meant to be used as an armrest. Um, there's also a couple of Isofix fittings on either of these seat as well for strapping in a seat if you want to do that. So how easy is it to fit a kid's chair into the back here then? Well let's open up this door. So that opened Around 70 degrees, I'd say, as you can see, we've got quite a big gap here to work with. If you've got a particularly bulky uh, kid's seat, that might be a little bit tricky to negotiate into the back here. But overall, should be suited to your needs. Is the middle seat absolutely fantastic? Well, let's find out as we slide across. And it is, it's all right, it's not too bad. Um, there's some plastic here. Uh, due to that foldy outy bit in the middle seat and that digs into your back so I'd only recommend sitting here for you know five to ten minute journeys. Uh, the biggest uh, threat here for the middle passenger is the massive transmission tunnel. It's quite frankly huge. Uh, you've basically got to straddle that in the middle here and uh, you're going to be encroaching on the personal space of the other rear passengers. So I would say though you could kind of comfortably be fit uh, three passengers over six foot tall in the back here. They might be touching elbows and shoulders, but for a short journey, absolutely fine. Um, if you are thinking about getting the free series as a car for a growing family, you know, you've got some young kids, um, I think they'd be more than comfortable in the back here. There is a lot of space to work with. Pretty generous um, leg room, as I said, 900 millimeters, um, and headroom is pretty good as well. So not too bad in terms of practicality, though if this is important to you, perhaps look more towards the estate, which is uh, much more cavernous when it comes to not only the boot space but also to the rear space right then guys what do you make of this interior let me know your thoughts down below in the comments if you'd like to explore this in more detail perhaps you want to dive into the different upholstery options and the tech packs available to really make the most out of the interior here then i uh, do be sure to get in touch with our vehicle specialists we'll be more than happy to help just call the number in the banner below so that's 01903 538 835 or you can click uh, the pop-up banner up there to book a free consultation at a date or time that works for you. Okay, let's make this transition easy for our editor Andre and we'll go talk about the trim levels and engines on offer with the 3 Series. <laughs> Okay then guys, let's dive into the trim levels and engine options available with the BMW 3 Series Saloon. So this is unfortunately where things get quite confusing because there are a number of different engine options available for each variant that does differ by the model. So I'm hopefully gonna make this uh, a little bit more digestible for you. Uh, I also need to note that information is correct at the time of recording and some features may be absent from the final model as a result of the ongoing chip shortage. So if you do want up to date specifications then uh, do get in touch with our vehicle specialists. I'm going to start by talking about trim levels. Uh, we're we'll focus our attention on the SE Pro variants, that's the entry level model. Uh, prices for this start from £33,250 and while this is the entry level model here, it does boast a wealth of standard specification and you'll be pretty pleased with what it has to offer. So this includes 17 inch V-spoke alloy wheels which look really really nice indeed. Uh, you get a matte black exterior trim that brings the car alive. You get lovely ambient lighting inside the cabin, adaptive 
LED headlights that adjust on the fly for you. Uh, you get front and rear parking sensors complemented by the parking assistance feature. And inside the cabin then, uh, this comes installed with the live cockpit professional setup. And you'll see this throughout the 3 Series range, it comes as standard. So this includes a 10.25 inch display in the center console there. Then behind the steering wheel, we have a 12.3 inch digital driver display, uh, where it's nice and sharp, it's easy to, easy to see all that essential information while you're on the move. That comes installed with the latest generation BMW iDrive infotainment system, which I absolutely adore. You can upgrade to larger 18 inch bicolor double spoke orbit gray alloy wheels with this configuration. That will set you back around 750 pounds. And there's a pack exclusive to this entry level trim as well, and that is called SE Plus. So for 900 pounds, you can have black perforated SensorTech leather upholstery inside the cabin, complemented by heated front sport seats and a larger fuel tank. Though it is worth noting that this larger fuel tank is only available with the 318D and the 320D models, not the 330E hybrid variant, which I'm gonna address in just a moment. Next up then, guys, we have M Sport. So prices for this start from 35,000 pounds, and this version makes a more powerful statement over the entry-level model with those M Sport stylings, which I'm sure you've uh, come to know and love over the years. Uh, so you get those 18 inch orbit gray alloy wheels that I just explained about with the SE Plus pack, but they have some M Sport stylings to them, which are rather nice there. You also get the high gloss shadow line exterior trim that I showcased earlier during the design section. Really love the, uh, the amount of personality that this brings out with the free series. You also get side uh, folding side door mirrors with an auto dimming function there. And in terms of safety, you get some additional equipment here. So that includes cruise control, uh, front LED fog lights, and a few more M Sport bits and bobs. So that includes the M Sport suspension that firms the ride quality for more athletic and sporty driving experience. And you get M Sport brakes with blue calipers. Next up the ladder in terms of pricing, we have Sport Pro. This starts from 41,085 pounds and it's essentially an enhanced version of the entry level SE Pro variant. So with this, you get um, upgraded light alloy wheels, still 17 inches and in that orbit gray design. Uh, you also get that high gloss exterior trim, the shadow line exterior trim there. And this also affects the gloss bumpers. So that's very much what you see with the M Sport model. Um, in terms of the specification, the standard upholstery is Takara leather with decor stitching Vanaska leather. That looks really, really gorgeous though. It's not gonna be to everybody's taste there. It is quite bold and extravagant. There are some other upholstery options to explore. So do get in touch if you'd like to dive into those. Uh, you go also get a sport leather steering wheel, plus a rear view mirror with auto dimming and loads more as well. So if you're not a fan of those M Sport stylings, you're not a fan of that firmer ride quality that you get with M Sport models, then perhaps look more towards the uh, Sport Pro trim because it's still quite athletic and sporty and could suit your needs perfectly there. Next up, but not the highest spec variant, uh, we have M Sport Pro Edition. And that is the model we've been showing you throughout this in-depth review. So if you like what you've seen so far of this car, then perhaps this is the one that you need to consider out of the entire lineup. Uh, prices for this start from £45,305. So according to BMW, this model exudes dynamic performance and powerful sportiness. It's not hard to see why though. So you benefit from a range of additional features courtesy of the M Sport Pro package. This includes a range of unique metallic paint options, uh, the M Sport exterior styling, plus jet black alloy wheels, 19 inches in size. You saw those earlier, they're absolutely gorgeous. Uh, you also get sun protection glass. Inside the cabin, you get free zone automatic climate control, plus uh, front and rear parking sensors complemented by a reversing camera system. So it's really easy to negotiate yourself into and out of the most precarious of parking spaces. Yeah, it's a really, really good variant, this one, guys. We've enjoyed our time with it, but is it worth 10,000 pounds more than M Sport. I will let you decide that one, but if you do need more details, don't hesitate to get in touch. And lastly, topping out the free series lineup, we have the M Performance models. So these start from 51,515 pounds and can climb as high as 78,000 pounds with the M3 competition with the M X Drive four wheel drive setup. I'm not gonna dive into too much detail regarding these M Performance models in this review. Uh, honestly, they do deserve their own in-depth review because they do really stick out in the free series lineup. But if you'd like to see that, I do leave a comment down 
down below. I'll just highlight a few of the standard specs though. So you get that X-Drive uh, four-wheel drive system as standard. You get the M adaptive suspension setup, which I absolutely love there. You get 19 inch alloy wheels and you get a cerium gray finish to the uh, mirror caps, the air inlets, and the bumpers as well. Really, really nice. It's such an exceptional performance car. But again, I feel like I need to get behind the wheel of this model and give you an in-depth review because it does stick out like a sore thumb in the 3 Series lineup. Right then guys, those are the trim levels. Uh, you can add single pieces of optional equipment to your configuration to get the most out of these. Uh, this includes a tow bar, so you can have that for £850. For £950, you can add an electric glass sunroof to your configuration, letting lots of light inside the cabin there, bringing it more alive, which is lovely. And for, well, on the more affordable side of things, you can uh, add a heated steering wheel for £170. There's quite a few options here. If you'd like to dive into those in a bit more detail, do get in touch with our team. Let's dive into engines. So what we're going to do here, we're going to refer back to the trim levels and explain which engines come with each of those variants. Uh, it's worth noting here that performance figures do vary depending on the variant that you opt for. Let's start with SE Pro. So there's three petrol, three diesel and two hybrid drivetrains configurable with the entry level model. Let's start with petrol. So the first option here is 318i. Uh, this comes as standard with automatic transmission and it's a rear wheel drive uh, vehicle here. It outputs 156 horsepower for 0 to 62 miles per hour time of a well, pretty impressive, 8.4 seconds. And miles per gallon, we can expect up to 44.1 on the combined cycle there. So it's quite an efficient and economical model for that entry level petrol variant. In the middle of the petrol options, we have the 320i drivetrain. Uh, this is configured with the sport automatic transmission with gear shift paddles behind the steering wheel. So within the menus, you can enable the manual mode and you can switch between the gears using those paddles behind the steering wheel if you want to. Once again, it's rear wheel drive, uh, though performance has been boosted. Uh, this variant outputs 184 horsepower, dropping that 0 to 62 time down pretty significantly to 7.1 seconds. Very impressive indeed. And this is all without affecting um, MPG, so it still outputs up to 41, 40, sorry, 44.1 MPG there. And uh, CO2 is uh, pretty similar to that entry level petrol as well, up to 149 grams per kilometre. Uh, that means this variant is in quite a high benefit in kind or company car tax band for 2022 to 2023. Um, if this is important to you, if you are looking for a new company car and you want to go with the 3 Series, do consider the hybrid variants which we're going to talk about in just a moment. The last petrol option available with the SE Pro is still the 320i, but it's now outfitted with the X-Drive all-wheel drive system. Horsepower is exactly the same as the regular 320i, um, though performance is slightly reduced. Though horsepower is the same, the 0-62 time is now 7.6 seconds, so just slightly slower, but still quite impressive there. Uh, CO2 emissions are quite a bit higher though, and MPG is a little bit lower. So that's the sacrifice you make for opting for the all-wheel drive setup. You'll have to weigh up whether that's worth it for you. Let's deep dive into those diesel drivetrains, starting with the entry level one, that is the 318D. Uh, so this comes to standard as manual. Uh, you can have automatic though, if you prefer to have that. And under the bonnet, we have a four cylinder engine. Uh, this outputs 150 horsepower for 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 8.4 seconds. So pretty good when compared to this car's rivals, though it's obviously a lot less than those petrol variants. Though an advantage of opting for diesel is that improved fuel economy. Indeed, we uh, can witness up to 58.8 miles per gallon on the combined cycle. Very, very good indeed. And this even climbs higher with the automatic transmission variant. Um, and in terms of CO2, it outputs much less than the diesel variant. So up to 131 grams per kilometer and that places it in a slightly better benefit in kind or company car tax band for 2022 to 2023. So yeah, it's a really good and impressive entry level diesel variant. If performance is important to you when it comes to your diesel model, then do consider the 320D variants. Uh, so this boosts performance to 190 horsepower, uh, dropping that 0 to 62 miles per hour time down to a pretty good 6.8 seconds. And this doesn't come, come without the cost of a fuel economy either. In fact, it's boosted over the 318D to around 61 miles per gallon. Very, very impressive indeed. 
When it comes to the X-Drive variant of the 320D, there aren't too many drawbacks here compared to its petrol equivalents. Uh, so performance, exactly the same here. It just outputs slightly more CO2 and it's less fuel efficient, though not by much at all. So if you absolutely have to go for all wheel drive, this is a really good option. Let's explore the hybrid variants now, starting with the 330E. So this is equipped with an 181 horsepower, four cylinder combustion powered engine. And this is complemented by electric motors uh, fitted to the axles. Um, these output 111 horsepower. So the total combined output here is 292 horsepower with the 330E variant, very impressive. A huge advantage of opting for this variant over the others is if you are considering getting the 3 series as your new company car. Uh, this is because it outputs just up to 32 grams per kilometer on the combined cycle and that places it in a really low benefit in kind company car tax band. Uh, for more information on those tax benefits do get in touch with our team. Uh, miles per gallon is exceptional as well so it can um, achieve up to 217 on the combined cycle. Very very good indeed. I mean it offers an all-electric range of up to 37 miles uh, so this may even cover your daily commute. Uh, just remember to plug it in when you get home from work and you could do your commute entirely via electric power which is a great Great option to see there. Uh, performance very good as well, outperforms the diesel and petrol variants, does 0 to 62 in 5.8 seconds. There's an X-Drive variant available with the 330E. Performance figures are exactly the same, so is the all-electric range, though the MPG has just been dropped to around 200. Uh, still really impressive. A couple of very good hybrid variants here if you are thinking about making that switch to electric power this year. In terms of charging times for these hybrid variants then, so if you plug it into a conventional 3-pin plug at your house, it will do a 0-100% to charge in 5 hours. Not too bad at all when compared to uh, fully electric vehicles there. Uh, if you do need it to charge it faster, you can plug it into a 7 kilowatt wall box and that will drop that time down to 3 hours. So that could be great if you plan to set up somewhere in the afternoon, plug it in in the morning, top it up and you can do that journey fully electric. So that's great. So that was just a rundown of those key petrol, diesel and hybrid units. But if we explore M Sport, you get an additional option here and that is the 330i setup. And that is the one that we actually have with our particular model here for review. So that outputs 258 horsepower for an excellent 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 5.9 seconds it's exceptionally quick off the block there of course this comes at the cost of fuel economy and fuel efficiency though on the bright side it is incredibly fun to drive when it comes to diesel then you still get those units that I mentioned with the previous model but you can now configure the 330d setup um, and this outputs 286 horsepower for a reduced 0 to 62 miles per hour time of 5.3 seconds so it's even faster than the 330i plus you benefit from greater fuel economy and uh, well a slightly reduced co2 output as well so for me this is the highlight of the 3 series range when it comes to the engine options available you benefit from a great combination of not only performance but fuel efficiency as well you can have the xdrive set up with the 330d if you want to and both of those hybrid drive trains are also available with the m sport variant with Sport Pro, you can configure all of those 330 units, whether that's petrol, diesel, hybrid, whichever one that you want to go for there. And with M Sport Pro Edition, you can configure the 320 units plus the 330 units with X Drive. Right then, guys, that's an overview of the engines and trim levels available with the BMW 3 Series. I know that was quite extensive, uh, but I hope that you've been able to find your perfect specification from those details. If you'd like to explore your options further and perhaps talk those through in a bit more detail uh, with a vehicle specialist, then do get in touch with our team on 01903. 538835 or do click the pop out banner above to book a free consultation at a time that works best for you. Right, it's about time we wrap up this review then. Let's head back to the car park. Right then guys, should you buy, lease or finance a BMW 3 Series Saloon in 2022? Well, it's still very much one of the best offerings in the premium mid-size segment. It's practical, advanced and fun to drive. So you benefit from that class leading infotainment setup, courtesy of the iDrive system, which I just absolutely love. 
there's enough room in the back there, quite a surprising amount of space actually, uh, plenty for two adults and a growing family. The boot is very practical as well, especially when you fold down those rear seats, are perfect for family holidays and biking excursions. Uh, the safety rating is high as well, five stars from Euro end cap, so that should alleviate any concerns you have regarding uh, the safety aspect of this vehicle. And of course, is that refined driving experience. You know, three years on from launch, this is still one of the, some of the most fun that I've had driving a vehicle, which just never stops being exciting and exhilarating. It's also brilliant that customers get a lot of choice when it comes to the powertrain, so petrol, diesel, hybrid, plus all the different trim levels that are available. Though admittedly, it's pretty confusing and overwhelming at first, it's almost guaranteed that there is a free series model out there that perfectly meets your requirements. We didn't even dive into those M performance models. Uh, they deserve their own in-depth review. Um, if you would like to see that, leave a comment down below. But there are some downsides to the 3 Series in 2022. Firstly, is that exterior design. While sleek, it is starting to look a little bit outdated, which just exemplifies how far vehicle design has come in such a short time. Secondly, we have the interior. While the overall quality is high and it is premium, it does pale in comparison to its rivals, especially the Audi A4, which continues to outclass the 3 Series in this aspect. Also, the firmness of the ride provided by M Sport models may not be to every motorist's taste. So we do recommend giving the 3 Series a test drive just so you can see which variant suits you best personally. Also, there are many features that are either not included as standard or even with those high spec trim levels, and it's quite suspect. Um, notably, the adjustable lumbar support and the electronic um, adjustment for the driver's seat. Plus, you could consider the amount of choice with this lineup a downside. Is it just far too complicated and does it need refining? Well, our vehicle specialists can find the perfect specification for you and take all that stress off your shoulders. So do get in touch on 01. 903 538 835 to secure your perfect free series or click that pop-up banner above to book a date or time for a quick chat that works best for you. Before you click off this video to go watch another of our in-depth reviews, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Also subscribe for the latest in-depth reviews. And once you are subscribed, please don't neglect the notification bell because when you click it, you're gonna get notified as soon as our new videos go live on the channel. But that's it guys. Thank you so much for watching this review. I'll see you next time. Take care. Safe driving.